Every day, thousands of motorists and people in buses pass this spot, across the Sydney Harbour Bridge, to travel to and from their places of work and so on. But most of them probably do not realise that what they pass is in fact a place of major historical significance. This is the Sydney Observatory, and it's placed here on Observatory Hill, overlooking the harbour. It was built in 1858 and is Australia's oldest observatory. There are two main features of the building, the domes and the tower. Now, while it might seem obvious that the domes are used to observe the night sky, it might surprise you to find out that the ball at the top of the tower is actually a type of clock. Alan, g'day. G'day, Greg. Can you tell us how the time ball actually works? The idea is you've got the large yellow ball, which weighs 250 kilos and is about one and a half metres across. Right. Very, very slowly, it's cranked up to the top of that main mast that you see up there. Yep. So it takes about two minutes, 50 seconds to go all the way up to the top. Once it gets up there, it sits there for one or two minutes, yep. and then at precisely one o'clock, as calculated by the latitude of Sydney, yep. it drops. And that is the exact time for this particular site. Right. And any ship in the harbour that looks at that time ball knows to rate their chronometers based on this latitude yep. and that movement of the time ball. Okay. So back in the day when it was first in place, that was a really important device for mariners. It was absolutely vital for any ship that needed to navigate, and that's every single ship that comes into Sydney Harbour. Yep. Every single ship that comes in has at least one rated chronometer on board. The chronometer is what you use for your vital bits of navigation. So you're coming from South Africa or heading up to Batavia, which is now uh, Java. Yep. Any one of those places has a place you can rate your chronometer. But between there and here, there's nothing. Right, so if it gets out of sync, then there's no way really of knowing. No, and a second's difference can mean the difference between a complete safe passage or having the bottom of the ship ripped out on some shoals that you didn't know were there. Here in Sydney, in the 1850s, Sydney is just becoming a vital port. Gold's been discovered about five or six years ago, and we want ships to come here rather than, say, Melbourne or Adelaide or Brisbane. Yeah. And in order to come here, there needs to be something to bring them to turn this into a vital port, and that's the time ball. Right. So, Alan, it drops at one o'clock every day. Now, is this now an automated process, or is there still some manual work involved? It's always had a manual component. Yep. In the old days, a junior astronomer or some other staff member would go up the 77 stairs to the very top. Sounds like you've been up those stairs more, more than once. Over the last 20 years, probably around about six or 700 times. <laughs> That's a lot of steps. A lot of steps. You go all the way up and you, then you crank the ball up. Now, and then it's triggered. Now we trigger it now from the GPS signals, but in the old days it was actually triggered by a solenoid system. A solenoid is where you create a tiny little electromagnet. Okay. So the junior astronomer sets it up, and then he steps back and the senior astronomer down in behind that green door there, yep. standing in front of the Frodsham clock, which has been calibrated to the main transit telescope, yeah. sets it up and as the second clicks over on the astronomical clock, it sends the electric signal up to the ball and the ball drops. And so it's the ball is dropped at one o'clock every afternoon here in Sydney for over 150 years. Barring accidents, maintenance and weather, yes. Fantastic. So, now that I know why the time ball was so important, we decided to climb the tower for a closer look. So, these are the last of the 77 steps and, oh, there's a fantastic view out over Sydney Harbour out that window. They're very steep. And here is the operation for the time ball up the top. Excellent. So this is the original mechanism. Right. You crank the ball up using this, once you've engaged the gearing system here, and then once it's all the way up, the trigger mechanism is run through here, yep. through the solenoid system that goes right down to the clock uh, you at the didn't, base. You didn't just drop the ball then, did you? I didn't, it's oh, not it's, engaged. It's not one o'clock. <laughs> it's a series of very careful processes. First you need to flip this over. This is called a Paul, P-A-W-L. And that now that is linked, it will start moving the gears. Oh, okay. Engage yeah. the gearing, like so. Do you have to do this every day? Every day. Wow. It's a, and that's after a fair bit of training to be allowed to do it. I'm you sure. can't just 
No one can walk here and do that. There's probably only uh, about four people who are rated to drop the time ball in Sydney. And I'm not one of them. Sorry. Worth a try. So here I am on top of Sydney Harbour next to this giant ball. You can see it's pretty big. This big ball drops every day. So this, this is the ball. That's it. This is the very same ball that's been in use for 150 years. Nice and solid, isn't it? Well, luckily it's hollow, otherwise it's solid copper, so it'd be pretty heavy to crank up otherwise. <laughs> yes. So it's, it looks like it's, it's quite big. It's probably big enough to hold a small person. Uh, well, funny you should say that. There are legends yeah. that people used to ride in this. The kids of the areas used to get a trip on their eighth birthday. What, sitting on the top? No, inside. On the side there, there's a little hatch, and if you open that hatch oh, up, yeah, yeah. you can actually see a tiny wooden seat. Seriously? And I've spoken with a guy who swears on his eighth birthday, he got in the seat, at five minutes to one, he was cranked to the very top, sitting inside on this little wooden seat, and at exactly one o'clock, it dropped, with him inside it. This could be bigger than bridge climb. Does it's... tourism New South Wales know about this? I, I'd pay for that, I think. Oh, yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not. not, not from this height. Oh, that's fantastic. The Sydney Time Ball is one of the world's last remaining operational time balls. While it no longer fulfills a crucial need, there are certain needs which haven't changed.